Hi, I'm Bridget Carraher. I'm co-director of the um, Simons Electron Microscopy Centre at the New York Structural Biology Centre and a whole centre of centres. And I'm also currently the founding technical director of the Chan Zuckerberg Imaging Institute. So what are the benefits of using cryo-M technology? Um, there are so many, I think, at this stage. Um, because cryo-M is many different uh, pipelines at the moment. There's a single particle cryo-M pipeline and the benefit there is mostly that you can get the high resolution structure of beautiful proteins and protein complexes, things that are intractable to other methods like X-ray um, crystallography and NMR. But then there's another whole pipeline we call cryo-electron tomography and really what that lets us do is look inside cells and see what proteins and protein complexes are doing inside cells, which may be different than what, um, they, you know, what they look like in vitro. So there are many, many benefits of cryo-electron cryo microscopy and cryo-electron tomography, basically looking at proteins, protein complexes, in situ at very high resolution. There's many bottlenecks in the pipeline. I think for single particle cryo-electron microscopy, the main bottleneck right now is in making the specimen in the form that we need it in the electron microscope, which has to be in a very thin form. And as a result, the protein sometimes interacts with the air-water interface, and that causes us all kinds of problems. For the cryo-electron tomography pipeline, there are many bottlenecks all the, all the way along. Making the specimen in the first place, getting enough contrast in the very crowded environment of the cell to actually find your, your structure of interest, the particular molecule that you're looking for. And then doing that processing can take months and months and months of very that hard work with a lot of compute power. And every single step along that way is difficult and has challenges. And also as a result, opportunities for new technology development, which I'm sure will be coming. So making this technology more accessible to the entire scientific community requires, I think, a lot of automation, a lot of streamlining, and best would be a lot less cost, because it's a very, very expensive technology, both to acquire the hardware in the first place, to look after that hardware, to maintain it, and then to run it. You need experts to, to run it. So a lot of automation and streamlining and cost reduction could help. The other thing that helps it somewhat, I think, is to have very large centers. We, we run a large center, a couple of large centers in New York City, and there's many others around the world, um, Technopole being one of them. And, you know, making those sort of centralized facilities where, you, where there's an economy of scale is very important, I think, to democratizing these methods. So I think Technopole is doing everything right. I'm very, very impressed by what you've done here. I think you have a, a beautiful array of equipment and it's very complete. That, that was quite impressive how complete the equipment is. And you're know, doing training, bringing people from the outside, having beautifully well supported platforms. All of that is exactly spot on right. And I think you, you've done a, a beautiful job in going in exactly the right direction.